The sea covers over two-thirds of the planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Between the states of Connecticut and New York is the Long Island Sound. A naturally protected channel into New York City used for over hundreds of years. The Sound's rich maritime history has played a significant role in the growth of our country. Join us as we explore its unsung residents and its forgotten history. Welcome back, everybody. This is Captain Dennis from Squalls Marine Divers. Today, we're going to be heading down to Norwalk, Connecticut to dive the wreck of the Celtic. The Celtic was an 85-foot tugboat that sank in November of 1984 when the barge that it was towing started to fill with water. Here you can see it sitting on the bottom, still connected to the barge that took it down. This is the path of what we're going to be doing today. So let's get in the water and see what we can find. We got here at about slack tide. You can see there's comb jelly still floating on by. We were able to drop the anchor right on the top of the tugboat, right on the roof. And you can see there's a lot of growth down here. And you can't really see too much inside the windows. The wreck makes for a great place for fishing. There's an awful lot of sea bass down here. This is on the top of the tugboat at 47 feet and we have pretty good visibility and pretty good ambient light. It appears that the barge is painted red which is an interesting color choice for a ship called the Celtic. I would have figured more green. Here's some of the windows into the pilot house. It's one of those sea bass I was talking about earlier. Follow him down under the bow. We start to cross over from the Celtic onto the barge called the Cape Race. The Cape Race was being towed and it started to fill up with water and things went really bad really quick and the Cape Race is what really pulled down the Celtic. The Cape Race was loaded with scrap metal that was uh, there was a salvage operation in 2010 and they they took all the scrap metal off and local fishermen tell me that the fishing here hasn't been the same ever since they salvaged all the scrap metal. You can see somebody's made a tie-in. And we're going to turn around and head back towards the Celtic. Here we are on the port bow, looking down against the outside of the hull. Moving forward, this big uh, rectangle thing you see here is like a fender to protect the bow of the ship when it's pushing ahead or it's up against another ship or barge. Here's up on the bow, a lot of sea anemones, all kinds of growth on this ship. 
And I think this is one of the bollards on the bow. It's just a single post. Clean this off a little bit. Just trying to clean it off so you can see it. Next time I come to this wreck, I'm going to bring a razor. She needs a shave. Here we can see some of the heavy duty line that was used by the crew of the Celtic to secure the tug to barges and other ships. Just behind that, we have the forward tow bits. You can really see how thick that line is. Pretty strong stuff. This looks like grading. I'm not sure if this is the grading they walked on, but it's still in pretty good shape. I'm going to slowly head aft on the starboard side. Here are some more bits. Looking up to the pilot house. Gonna drop down to one of the lower decks. All the doors have been removed, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty much everything's been removed on this ship. Gonna stick our noses in here. I'm not gonna do any penetration diving. This is just my arm leaning in with the camera. All kinds of lines, lobster warp, anchor lines, things like that. And if you look, you start to pull the growth away. You start to see that there's actually a window down here. That probably at one point had a porthole, which is now since gone. This also demonstrates how easy it is to silt out the dive. But we've got a decent current today, so I think we'll be in good shape. Still moving aft. Here's a second doorway. You can barely make it out with all the growth. This is the interior ceiling of the first lower deck. Looks like there's a door to the left. I'm not sure if this is a bed frame or something. But well, we're not going to go inside. Now we're pretty much on the aft section of the ship. We're not on the stern, but we are looking up over to the second deck. not all the way on the stern but we're on the business end of the ship where most of the gear would be stowed for all the towing see a bunch of lines are all tangled up here we're on the port side cinder block here Look in one of the aft windows on the port side. Kind of looks like there's a cabinet here on the left.
Here's a couple more seen enemies. And that's pretty much it for this first dive. So we're going to make our way back up to the anchor and then slowly up the anchor line, do our safety stop, get back on the boat and do our interval. We're going to be down for a second dive and we hope you join us for that one as well. Well, thanks for joining us in another dive here in the Long Island Sound. You can check us out at squallspring.com and use our interactive dive map and dive all over in the Long Island Sound. If you're interested in learning more about scuba diving or you'd like to get certified, I encourage you to visit today's sponsor, Ocean Blue at Rex Dive Center. They're located in Norwalk and they can help you with any kind of dive need you have, from equipment sales to training to even super cool dive vacations. And you might even see a Sasquatch or two down there. Tell them Captain Dennis sent you.